Welcome everybody, this is Denny with Why Is This True, and joining me today is Carl Mullison, and we're going to continue with our channeling s series, and today uh, Carl's going to channel Marilyn Monroe, and uh, if, you, if you don't know who this person is, please check the description uh, for this video, and there's a short bio there, and I also invite you to, to do a search on her name on YouTube, there's some excellent documentaries about her, her life and her death. Um, so... Um, and her, her death is very controversial, and uh, and she was a very um, she played a, a very significant role in um, the early days, the end of the fifties, beginning of the sixties during the Kennedy administration, and so she was a pivotal figure in the entertainment world and also in politics, uh, oddly enough. So um, uh, we have eight questions today, and I'm going to invite Carl to uh, discuss what we're going to be doing here. And if, in case you haven't seen any of our other videos, and uh, and I want to thank Carl, yeah, thank you, Carl, for joining me again. I really appreciate you doing this with me. Thank you, Denny. I'm delighted to be here as always to help with your quest to find truth about many things of importance for the world and for society and our understanding and growth. This is what I'm after, and the work I do, I help people with their issues and issues can be very, very local and specific to an individual and they can spread outward to family groups and then the community and beyond to the nation state and global. And it turns out we're all in this together and we're all interconnected and what one, what hurts one can spread and send some darkness to many, many others. There is value in finding out truth about things, especially when it's pointing you towards something very, very sinister that influences humanity as a whole. And unfortunately, we have those issues going on right here, right now. So we have an interest, uh, you and I, in seeing how Marilyn Monroe might be involved in some of these things. The signs are there on the surface, and we do have an ability to talk with her. This is one of the things that I do as a channeler, in addition to channeling divine beings and the higher selves of individuals in the living, <clears throat> I can also channel light beings. I can channel discarnated entities who are trapped in between planes as well. This is a fate that befalls fully one out of three people. They don't fully transition to the light immediately. They need help. And this is because we're roughed up here as human beings. We're not living anything close to an ideal existence. We're sort of getting by. We're very closed off. We're disconnected largely from the divine realm. And that's why so many struggle with faith, because you, you have to have faith because <clears throat> there's very little evidence within your own perceptions. So talking to beings in the light can help bring clarity to the issues about their time in the physical because they can speak to it themselves, who they were, what they were doing, and why, in a way that we might speculate on, looking at the evidence in the historical records and, and appearances and interviews and so on, whatever might be available. But there's something special about going to the source, because people still exist. They continue on. And that's one of the really nice things about this even though we're dealing with dark subject matter, the reality is we have an immortal soul. It is true. And when we leave here, we go somewhere else. It's good to know you can go somewhere that is wonderful and magnificent. And that's what we should aspire to. There are no big problems. They seem big to us. But when you're immortal, any individual life only has so much significance, only so much influence. <clears throat> Everything counts because the 
good and bad we do continues forward as an energy and comes back and interacts with us in various ways. So we plant a lot of seeds while we're here. We do it through our families and our children and friends and coworkers. We're contributing to others. That helps their lives and in turn is a collective work of ours. You know, you look at the greats, you know, Da Vinci and and Picasso and the great authors and thinkers, you know, the Einsteins and the great philosophers and their legacy. Well, we have a legacy too. Everything we do affects the future as well as to some extent the past because everything is swirling around as energy. So the light beings have a legacy and they have a future also and they have a stake in things. So it's not unimportant. They're not so concerned about what happened personally. They don't care about their misfortunes necessarily in in the same way we think we might. And that's because we're here feeling pain. We're here very much aware of our hard times and failures and unfulfilled dreams and, and so on. They had their innings, but now they're back in bliss and a place of tremendous potential. It's so unlike here. We're supposed to have that down here in the physical and we don't. That's our quandary. So that's what we're working on. That's the human project. So when I reach out with channeling, one thing that's very important is to do it authentically because there are pitfalls, many, many pitfalls in doing channeling. Any kind of intuitive outreach will bump into countless energies wanting to piggyback on that, wanting to interact and step in, elbow their way in if they can. So there needs to be safeguards. I do all my channeling work through creator of all that is. I go to creator and ask creator to connect me with the consciousness of the target and to put protection and safety around the work to prevent outside listening and interference. Very, very important. <clears throat> Most channelers don't bother with that. And they're very naive because they're going to end up talking to an interloper. It's almost guaranteed when you do that. Because the divine realm has to let that happen. It's just like with people. If you decide to open your door at 2 in the morning and see who's passing by or call out to someone, if someone answers and said, oh, yeah, I'm that person or I'm, you know, I'm an authority on what you're seeking and you start talking to them, no one will stop it, including God. This is what happens all the time. So most channelers are really being fooled by imposters. And it, it doesn't give me pleasure to say that. No one wants to hear that. But it's a huge liability because so many are being misdirected. All the people they follow. It, it, it's very, very sad. <clears throat> so we're basically getting minding. You know, it's like we have babysitters, these imposters who come and keep us dealing with simple things, simple ideas, simple concepts, and never question anything very deeply. And never talking about the big picture, never talking about government and the question of extraterrestrial beings causing problems for humanity. It's always, oh, it's wonderful, they're here to help, and these sort of messages. And it's all propaganda. So we're here on a fact-finding, truth-seeking mission. The beings in the light will only tell us certain things. There's a lot of rules. We're, in a way, cheating doing this because the test of us is what we do in our land of disconnection and how we make it work still and find a way back. So the cheating is allowed because we're innovating it, we're seeking it, we're requesting it. We're allowed to make requests of the divine. <clears throat> in any light being, that's okay. The light beings, though, 
cannot solve the problem for us. They can't tell you, well, here's all the people running the hidden cabal and here's where they hang out and, you know, here's where you need to go to round them up. And, you know, they can't do that. So and they, and they will not blow the whistle on people in ways that will get them in legal trouble, for instance, because we don't know how to do that in the highest and best way. So when we really punish a wrongdoer, we're creating a karmic debt for ourselves because there are more enlightened ways. So, so that's just one, one for instance. So they will only share so many things, and they don't want to add to our burdens either. So they're more likely to clear up a falsehood or a source of fear for us than introduce new fears. Right. And they can't jump way ahead of us in terms of what we know and don't know. So we'll typically get a little bit of further knowledge and information. Yeah. It's been really interesting to see over this course of uh, channeling series we've done how that's worked. And it's not it's not very obvious, but if you paid attention to like the first ones we did back, you know, was it in f February? I think we did uh, Eisenhower, the Secret Service agent, and Forrestal, you know, that what came through in those and what's coming through now, there is qu quite a difference, but it's been very incremental, you know, in that progression going along. And it's just because we've been able to integrate, um, and this is especially true for me, integrate what they're, you know, how they, how they like to deal with us in terms of the questions, the answers, and it's helped me to refine the kind of questions that I ask, the kind of questions I ask now aren't very similar to the ones that I asked, um, you know, when we first started out, just because, you know, I'm starting to get an idea of what, what their focus is, you know, where, you know, what, what they want to convey to us, you know, and, and, the, and some questions don't elicit much of a response because it's not germane to, to the help that we need, you know? Yes. Well, we, we're growing, ourselves personally with our knowledge and our insight and our wisdom and that matters because we can learn more if we approach the light beings from a higher state of preparation and awareness someone who knows nothing about spirits and extraterrestrials won't be told if they have some way of connecting to a divine level. That's not what they'll be told about. They'll be given some help, <clears throat> mostly about dealing with their emotional problems and trauma and their living circumstances and so on, their environment. Yeah. But it won't be explained to them. And you won't hear all the darker details because they're not ready. And they're not asking to know about that. You get what you ask for. Right. They won't in unilaterally. Yeah, the, the respect of the free will aspect is is very helpful. Like if you if you just think about um, a being, a light being, respecting humans' free will, the free will aspect, and how that um, how that that actual principle creates so many of the rules that they have to agree to in their communications with you, you know. At every turn, they're going to respect the human's free will. Um, and that's a really good example you gave there. Um, they're, they're not going to step on your beliefs like you have pointed out in the past, the, uh, the skeptics. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to tread on that ground. If, you, if you're uh, a skeptic, then that's a choice you've made beforehand. And they're not going to interfere with that. Yeah, they can't. You see, they're not allowed to... to interfere with your decision to be a non-believer. You know, they're, they're willing to let you have your experience, totally. Right. Even if it's misguided, if in a, even if it's personally harmful, even if, even if it's potentially fatal to your survival, they can't go in and save you that way, directly. You, you're on your own. You have to find your own path, your own answers, your own solutions. Now, you can ask them. You know, if you pose the question, what is my biggest threat right now? 
and what can I do about it? Then they might be able to let you in further as to what's happening. But if you don't ask that question, they're not going to come in and dump that on you. Right. Because that's going to interfere with you and your choices. It's going to, you know, change your thinking radically. And especially coming from on high, you know, as people would take it, it has more power than just talking to you and me might with, with a person. So they're very mindful of that. Right. And one aspect I know that happens with these interchanges Creator is present as well, and Creator will step in if the light being needs correction as to what can be shared or not. And it probably is pre-vetted through Creator. So even though it's what they want to say and what they're choosing to say first, Creator may override that and have them modify it a bit before it comes out in the channeled spoken words. So you're you're privy to that dynamic during the channeling process. Is that true? I am not privy. I only know the words that come through from my mouth because they they float up through my subconscious. Okay. Much like a thought. Okay. I, I don't know at the time what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. But I have been told that this is one of the things that happens. Okay. Because I was asking about the whys and wherefores and what's said and what's not and what are the factors involved. And it was explained to me that you're not going to have loose cannons just, you know, tipping the hand, you know, and showing all the, you know, all the cards. It's not going to happen because creator won't allow it. Creator has a lot of rules about them interacting with us. And that's the reason, because this is supposed to be a do-it-yourself world. And that's the test. Can we survive? Can we prevail? coming from behind as we are, that's why the benevolent ETs aren't going to swoop in and save us. Because then that just ends the experiment for us. Right. You know, it's fine if a more advanced being can handle this. The question is, can we handle it? You know, it's like someone coming in and giving you all the answers on the, the uh, SAT exam. You know, to save you, you know, well, that's theoretically possible that, to occur. But what does it prove and what does it do for the prospective student? Then the test has no meaning. Right. It's not about them any longer. It's about the other stand in. So that's why, you know, people, you know, we, we tend to think, you know, okay, we got a light being, here's our chance. We'll find out all the big secrets. And that won't happen. You only get what you're ready to hear, what's allowable to share with you. Right. And what is what is in proportion to your level of preparation right. to be ready for that information. Right. And then so taking that into consideration, it's it's known that this is this is public. This this it's known that this recording that we're doing right now is public. So that's part yes. of the equation. It's not just Carl and me sitting here having a discussion. Or you know, doing a channeling session. This is for the purposes of, of you know, wide, widely broadcasting out there on in YouTube land. Okay, so with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and get started. I have eight questions for Marilyn, and uh, my understanding is that you have already done a spirit rescue with Marilyn, and that happened uh, some time ago. But there hasn't been any subsequent uh, communications between you and Marilyn with Marilyn um, as a light being. Is that correct? That's right. She okay. um, she was a person who, it was brought to my attention, in fact, was struggling. You know, I have a lot of ways to spend my time and, and can't do all the things that I want to do as it is. And someone actually came as a client and hired me to do a spirit rescue for Marilyn Monroe. Oh, okay. And first I thought, okay, well, this might be someone who's unbalanced, you know, maybe has some fixation and, you know, it might be a fantasy or something. You know, it happens, right? I mean, I deal with all sorts of people. And, but it turns out that most of the time, even the people who are strange and the average person would say they're unbalanced and so on, have a lot of correct intuitive perception. 
And that was certainly the case with this person. I mean, he did not fall in that extreme category. It's just the question seemed odd at the time. Mm -hmm. This is an okay sort of person, but, but, uh, you know, out of the blue, um, and I checked and she wasn't in the light, lo and behold. So I did a spirit rescue for her and it was really, really cool, uh, to, to, to see that and to be in connection with her energy. And she was in a state of torment at the time. She was suffering. She was struggling. It's not fun being earthbound. There's a lot of continuation of emotional difficulty and people are trapped without their normal senses and all they have is their fears and their worries. And they can just turn that over in the, over in their mind for years and they can be set upon by dark spirits and so on. So it's not pretty. Anyway, so I did the rescue and she's on my list to go back and, and talk with again and uh, you give me some feedback about what was going on more in more detail and, and also how things are now for her and her plans and, and things about her life that, that I've been interested in. And so we'll get at some of those things here today. Right. Okay. But it, this is a common fate. I'm telling you, it's a common fate. I've talked to many celebrities, and it's because occasionally my guidance will point that out to me. I'll be watching something on TV or whatever, and suddenly I have this thought. You know, I wonder if they're in the light, you know, and I'll go and check, and they're not. So I'm getting a little bit of a, a tip off sometimes about some of these folks, but people you would never believe in a million years. Yeah. Needed rescuing. Right. Right. So. And, then, it's, and we it's finally a, discovered a positive use for television. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a mass communication. It keeps us. You know, people. I mean, Marilyn had been gone for I think. 52 years or something before I did the rescue on her. And she was trapped that entire time. Yeah. She never made it to the light. Yeah. She's there. Now, so hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We, we've had some other ones uh, related in this series where some of the spirit rescues were done, where we're talking uh, long periods of time where they were earthbound. It's kind of shocking really when you hear about it, when you think about it. Yes. Oh, and actually, let me correct one thing. I did talk to her subsequently in the light. Oh. Yeah. I did talk to her because I wanted to get some feedback about the uh, the spirit rescue experience. Oh, okay. I did, I did. I did talk to her again in the light. Not not at length, but to I, there's a certain set set of questions that I've been asking some of these beings to get feedback about the process. Mm-hmm. So I did do that okay. because yeah, I, I remember her energy. I was thinking about how wonderful it was. And, you know, and then she told me that she was beaming her love to me. And boy, was she. Woo! She she was she she really w went out of her way to create that experience, you know, which was really cool. Really wonderful. Yeah. So she's doing fine now. OK, so okay. We'll see what she can tell us. OK, great. Thank you, Carl. All right. Shall I go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's go. All right. So just give me a minute to get into the right state of consciousness to make the connection, and then she'll announce when she's here. Okay. This is Marilyn Monroe speaking. Hello, Marilyn. Thank you for joining us. What were the circumstances of your death and what happened to you after you passed? Can you describe what it was like as an earthbound spirit and your subsequent spirit rescue? My passing was very, very troubled. And the reason for that was I was in a terrible frame of mind because I had been threatened at length about my knowledge of high-level political figures and the 
relationships that took place that were at risk of being revealed publicly, or so they thought. And so I was threatened at length, threatened with the revelation of my background and my involvement with the political figures involved here in a personal setting and that this would once and for all make me the most vile and evil female and this was extremely disturbing for me what I did not see coming was my death at their hands they arranged my demise they did not like the answers to my to the questions asked of me about what might happen in the future and I foolishly replied through ego thinking that I could be on top of my own story and therefore my own fate after all it was I who held the cards I thought because I had the goods in the sense of personal doings of these men in ways that would compromise them and not so much myself they explained to me that this would backfire and that I would be reviled having tainted the lofty image of the first family in fact and this I rebuffed and that was my undoing seeing I was potentially unmanageable and that I might make a rash step to be self-serving in some way and let the story come forward they decided to end things once and for all to silence me and having just been threatened in this way with retribution and a campaign in fact to discredit me and to cast aspersions and to influence public opinion that would entirely undo my entire life's work and that they would see to this and had the money to enforce it and make it certain those were my thoughts as I transitioned that my destiny was to be completely undone and that all in the world would come to hate me and regret my existence and the pain of my passing only grew I was in a state of separation like none other it is like being buried alive except you cannot even sense that directly because all there is is your own thought there is no sight, no hearing, no sense of touch, no sense of having a place of existence. It is a deep, deep depth of nothingness that is oppressive because there is not the spark of life on display not the merest hint of anything being in existence and in the middle of that nothingness was my thought stream replaying over and over the tormenting that had taken place and my growing inner fear about its possibly coming true. 
this is how I spent the many decades until I was saved by your channel coming to check on me and then bringing some healing to me to raise me up enough that I could see the light caller who came as the first of many to greet me and take me the rest of the way to the light, to be back in among my friends and long-term family. We all have a vast family, much greater in size than we know when we are in the earth environment with a very small group of people. And this is because we do last a long time and we are always moving forward and having many, many new experiences coming back again and again with many of our friends and family, but also broadening our experience base and including newcomers as well. This was my fate because of my being naive and the torment I was having in my life at that time was imposed on me by manipulation coming from outside myself. I had the reputation of being emotionally unstable, being unruly, being impossible to work with because of my emotional fragility. This was on display for all to see. What is not on display is the reasons why. It was a combination of negative influences from outside myself that made me unstable. And this inner struggle is what caused me to attempt to break away from the manipulation at the very worst time, rather than just agree with those who came to check on me and promised to be a good girl. I stood up to them and because of my ego did not want to see them win. And that was my true undoing. But I was putty in their hands in many ways for quite a long period of time. Much of my adult life was governed by the manipulation of others. Being back in the light now, I am free from all of it. And I can tell you that I would never wish that life on anyone. It was a life of inauthenticity and great despair. And that was a combination of my upbringing as well as the powers that served to redirect me for dark purposes. Thank you. Was the testimony from the ambulance driver, James Hall, regarding Dr. Ralph Greenson and your murder correct? It is entirely correct. This was a sinister event from beginning to end. It was entirely done with the intention to kill me, to silence me, and then cover up the crime. And so those clues that people have brought forward have shined light on the truth of things. And this is a good thing because the evil needs to end and people need to wake up 
and see that very little that takes place in the public arena is what it seems. Most things are manufactured or manipulated into existence so they can be totally under control of the hidden hand, the true world government that seeks to oppress humanity. And I was one small player on the world stage. And it was a very, very traumatic experience for me. So I am indebted to those who are astute enough to see things were not as they were reported and have the courage to come forward and tell their story of what they observed. So you can look to these individuals and their history for further clues here. We do not want to be a divine whistleblower in that degree to name names and add more negativity in the trail of events. What took place is bad enough and I do not wish to compound it further by creating more consternation, more finger pointing, more vigilantism, or even legal action, as this will not be handled well, and will likely be thwarted in the end, as most legal endeavors are, if they go against the powers that be. So this is much like inviting people to butt their heads against a wall. It is easy to do from on high, so to speak, but I am sympathetic to the person whose head would be hitting the wall and do not wish to add more pain to the world. My pain has come and gone and I am in a place of joy now and I do not regret my passing. After all, my career was on a downward arc at that point in any event, and with the troubled relationships coming again and again, and not being emotionally able to sustain a long-term relationship, my future would inevitably have worsened and was bad enough already. I was not in an emotional state of readiness to have a mature love relationship of stability. And that meant my future would be one of continued suffering. So in some ways, my death was a blessing to me other than to inflict the nightmarish horror of all those years lost to me in pain and torment, that may well have happened in any event. And so in a sense, the irony here is they delivered me to your channel earlier than might have happened. And at the point I might have died in old age, alone, forgotten, and suffering even greater, I might have been lost for centuries before being rescued. It happens in the end for everyone, but there can be quite a long period of loss. So I have no desire for recrimination, for revenge, or to see anything negative come from me and my story. I do see the value in bringing forward the larger truths, the larger whys behind how these events could even happen. 
and that will be served in this discussion. Okay, thank you. Were you also cloned? What are the karmic consequences for someone being cloned, if that was indeed the case? I was not cloned, and that was because of my celebrity. There is much cloning done of humans, and that is done for purposes of replication to create groups of individuals that can be assigned tasks and are completely expendable. But then again, all humans are expendable to the true power. And the other advantage of the clone is their ability to be programmed entirely to serve an alien agenda and a non-human one. And that will be done without question, without reservation, without any real thought or introspection because the clones are not a true human being that results. It is a human persona and physicality built in combination with a technological inner framework, a form of advanced intelligence. And so it is a partial human in appearance and personality characteristics only. It is a soulless being and one with very limited range and knowledge base. Only what is added from the external programmers will be on board. So these are a poor semblance of a human in the final analysis because they are not beings you would welcome into your family or have a close relationship with. There would be no chemistry because you would not feel their soul essence. This is taken for granted in how people function. And this is simply because you are not truly educated. You only have surface appearance and surface information and no deep understanding of even your own human experience and what it is based on. But when people are together, they have an awareness of the soul essence of one another. And that greatly informs their feelings and their reactions to the other purpose, when other person. When you are with a clone, this is entirely absent. So they will only pass for human in the presence of people who are not intuitive to a significant degree or for whom the exchange is quite superficial in nature and there is no need to develop a deeper relationship because that is unlikely to happen because the being in front of you is basically an empty shell. It is a simulation and a clever simulation to be sure, but an a, sim a simulation nonetheless. Okay, thank you. Uh, during your life, were you made aware of the alien agenda and or the use of mind control in your dealings with the Kennedy brothers or any other high-level context that you made?